Act one, the backyard. Sl the sliding glass door to a small house is on one side. A dilapidated boarded up tree house stands on the other. Marbles is perched on the top of the fence, which borders the entirety of the yard and is perched there, dribbling a yo-yo of some such. Lizzie comes marching out of the house, a cape around her shoulders, paper crown haphazardly balanced on her head, a whisk in her hand. Ten hut! Right! Marbles. Marble scrambles down from the fence and into line behind Lizzie as she parades around, conducting the march with a whisk. Right! 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 Left! Right! Left! Left! Right! Company halt! Aye, aye, Captain. Marbles, that's a pirate saying. You're supposed to say, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Better. I want to be the sir. Why do you get to be in charge? Because it's my turn. It was your turn last time. So? Please. No. Oh, Lizzie, come on. Mar. Let's get paper scissors for it. Mar. This is a duel. You can't back down from a duel. Lizzie makes a disgusted noise but relents. They count to three silently, and when they throw their moves, Lizzie is holding a rock and Marbles is holding his pointer finger. What's that supposed to be? A magic wand. That's not how you play. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Oh, yeah, you're just mad because I won. Nuh-uh. The rules are that scissors beats paper, rocks beat scissors, paper beats rock, and a magic wand beats everything. So I win. Fine, you win. Marbles begins marching again. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Lizzie Farron smells like mold. Hey! <laughs> what? I don't smell like mold. <laughs> Says who? Says me! Mm-hmm. This is why you shouldn't get to be the leader. No, this is why. Marbles tackles Lizzie and begins tickling her. They laugh wildly together and eventually collapse to the ground. Mar, how did we get here? You marched uh, through the side door, around to the porch, and then down the side. No, I mean here. Oh. Here. Um, well, your mom and dad made you, remember? You grew up in your mom's belly. And no, no, not like that. How did people get here? You mean like in America? Like on Earth. Oh. Well, I think we fell from the stars. One time a star exploded and people fell off and went scattering everywhere. And some of them landed in the Grand Canyon and built houses with Legos and stuff. And now we're here. Oh. Why do you ask? I was just wondering. Miss Patrick said on su Sunday that God made Adam and Eve in a garden and giraffes and Pudding. Huh. Yeah. What did God say? Let there be light. I think. No, about the getting here. I don't know. Well, next Sunday you should ask him. Can't. Well, why not? God doesn't come to church, silly. He takes messages, like a voicemail. That's stupid. Stupid's a bad word. Is not. Is too. How come? Because. You sound like your dad. Because, 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 because. <laughs> it's a funny word. Hey, do we still have those old cans? Lizzie leaps up and digs around next to the treehouse, producing somewhat dirty cans. Uh-oh, spaghetti -o. Marbles pulls a ball of twine from his satchel. What are you doing? You'll see. I have an idea. Marbles begins rigging the two cans together. Hey, when's lunch? I don't know, but I think it's tuna casserole. Gross. I know. I wish it was scrambled eggs and toast. Me too. I wish it could be breakfast all the time. Marbles has finished his contraption. He hands one can to Lizzie. Take this. What is it? Go stand over there. Mar, this is silly. Just do it. Okay, okay. Lizzie crosses the yard and looks quizzically at Marbles. Marbles gestures for her to put the can to her ear. This is Marbles 919er coming in. Do you read me? Over. <laughs> no way! Do you read me? 
919er, this is Lizzie Farron coming at you from the porch. Over. Lizzie. Copy Lizzie Farron. What do you read from over there? Over. 919er, the ground appears to be lava. Repeat, the ground is lava. Lava? Lizzie. You got to get to the porch. It's volcano proof. Marbles hops across the yard on one foot dramatically. Come on, Mar, you can do it. Faster, faster. Lizzie. Yes? Thank God. He embraces Lizzie. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. I was right here. You must not have looked very hard. You can't just wander off like that. It's a free country, Mimi. I didn't wander off. I just went outside. You know the rules. No going outside without asking. Right. And did you ask? Yes. No, you didn't. I did. When? When you were on your computer. Lizzie, you know you can't ask me things when I'm working. Sorry. What were you doing out here? I was just talking. To who? Marbles. Oh, Lizzie. What? Elizabeth, remember what we said about marbles? No. Marbles isn't real, Lizzie. Yes, I am. But he's right there. No, Elizabeth, he isn't. He's imaginary. You have to stop pretending it's not safe. <laughs> you need to get your eyes checked, Dad. Hello, Captain Crazy Pants. It's time to go inside, young lady. No, I want to stay out here. You can't stay outside without supervision. Marbles can watch me. I sure can. I'll take good care of her. Uh, sailor's promise. See? Come on, Lizzie. No. Don't talk back to me. You haven't been taking your medication, have you? Yes, I have. No, she hasn't. Look at me. Tell the truth. Did you swallow your pill this morning? Yes. Elizabeth. Liz, don't lie. Remember what Miss Patrick said about fibbing. Okay, fine, geez. No, I didn't take my medicine. Why not? I don't like it. It makes my head feel stuffy and it makes marbles go away. If you take it like you're supposed to, the fuzziness will go away. <laughs> that makes no sense. At all. David reaches into his pocket and produces his prescription bottle. He shakes out a pill as he speaks. It does make sense. Trust me. David extends his hand, offering Lizzie the pill, and she turns away. Lizzie, it's for your own good. I don't want to take that. You will do as I say, young lady. No! Lizzie, it's okay. No, it's not! Medicine, now, or no dessert for a week. You gotta do what he says, Liz. No, he's lying. It doesn't make me better. It makes me sick, Mar. I won't be able to see you. I know. Lizzie, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. Five. Ted, please. Four. Just do it, Liz. Three. Two. Fine. Lizzie grabs the pill from David and puts it in her mouth, staring him down. Swallow. I did. You most certainly did not. I did. Liz Lizzie. Swallow it. Now. I don't want to leave you. Okay, Lizzie. I'm gonna miss you. I know, but I'll be right here. I love you, Marbles. I love you too, kid. Lizzie reluctantly swallows the pill. Later, Lizzie Lou. After a moment, the pill takes its effect. Marbles a shoulder shrink. All right, kiddo. How do you feel? I, uh, I don't know, but I think I'm sad. Of course you are. Why? Because of me. Why are you sad, Elizabeth? Because she can't see me. I'm not sure. Did... Is someone missing? You better take care of her. No, sweetheart. Every... Everyone's still here. Oh. Let her win shoots and ladders. She gets sad when she loses, and when... And, and you have to give her popsicles when she's sad. David glances in the direction of Marbles. Let's go inside. I won't leave you. 
Okay. I promise, Lizzie. Did you hear that? No. What did you hear? I thought... What? Nothing, I guess. It's not your fault. Sometimes our minds play tricks on us. Yeah, I must be hearing things. <laughs> Come on, Lizzie. As they turn to leave, Lizzie kicks the SpaghettiO can. She picks it up and looks across the yard. Lizzie? Lizzie, I'm right here. Lizzie. Lizzie tugs the string off the can and follows David inside. Lizzie! Marbles picks up his tin can. 9019er? Farron, do you read me? Come in. Hello? Hello? Marble sinks to the ground, clutching the can. I'm not going anywhere. The pinky promise, Lizzie. Meg and Beth's apartment. It's modern and cozy. A table with four chairs is in the kitchen. It's cluttered, but clean. Beth! Meg is at the stove, cooking. Beth! Elizabeth! All right, all right, I get it, I'm up. Morning sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Beth kisses Meg on the cheek. Where's my coffee? Microwave. Beth shuffles to the microwave and punches in 30 seconds. What'd that machine ever do to you, huh? How'd you sleep? Shh, coffee first, then talking. <laughs> the microwave beeps and, Meg, and Beth removes her mug, waiting half a second before taking a sip. Hot! No shit, Sherlock. It's early. It's 11.30. Like I said early. Meg sets two bowls on the table and Beth sits down with her with her coffee. Meg stands hovering. So are we going to talk about last night? Coffee. Coffee can wait. Meg confiscates the mug. Hey give it back. I need an answer Beth. I told you I needed more time. Beth, come on. Meg? It's not you, okay? Now can we just have a little quiet? Okay. Thank Meg you. Meg returns Beth's coffee. Thanks. Is it... Is it about your dad? Meg! Because if it is, then Meg. we can just talk about it. It's been three years. You... Can't let him keep screwing up your life with Meg, all of enough, this. please. It's too early for this. Are you okay? Are you? That's not fair. You're right. I'm sorry. So can we talk about it? Not yet. When? I don't know, okay? It has to be soon. I know that. I'm sorry. Just give me a little time. I need to think about it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Meg clears her plate. Aren't you eating? I'm already late. I'm meeting Dan before class. You didn't eat. You're not my mother. You're right. Huh. I'm the love of your life. You should eat. And you should be out working on your thesis. But you don't see me giving orders. I'll pick something up on my way. Fine. Are we still on for dinner tonight? Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I bring Dan with me? Sure. The more the merrier. Just so long as you warn me before you bring the whole poetry club again. When are you going to let that go? <laughs> when I forget that awful sonnet. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Meg kisses Beth. I love you. I love you double. Meg exits. Beth takes a few moments and finishes her coffee. She clears the table and begins cleaning up the kitchen. 
She rinses the plates and puts them in the dishwasher and begins clearing the trash, picking up the empty SpaghettiOs can. Hello? Huh? She puts the can down and turns confused. After a moment, she resumes her task, picking the can back up. Niner one niner, come in, do you read? What? Who's there? Hello? 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 Beth drops the can. No, 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 no. Beth closes her eyes and begins counting backwards. Hello? The counting has not worked. Go away. No, thank you. Shit. Shit's a bad word. Sorry. Copy. Do you read? Yes. Yes what? Uh, I, yes, I read. Copy. Over. 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 Oh my god, I'm losing it. Over. Are you? What did you lose? <laughs> Clearly, I'm talking to a tin can. No, you're not. You're talking to me. Over. Yeah, a can. <clears throat> Over. No, marbles. Beth drops the can. Hey! That's not funny. What's not funny? That's not funny. How do you know that name? Because it's mine. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Elizabeth Renee Farron. I live in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Lizzie! No. Yes. No one calls me that anymore. Why not? Because I'm not a little girl. Are you sick? You sound funny. I'm not sick. I... At least I don't think. Maybe I am. You're funny. I am not. Lizzie Farron got old. I'm an adult. <laughs> Too bad. Why is this happening? I need to talk to you. About what? I forget. That's very helpful. Hey, what's it like being a grown-up? Uh, Do you go to bed at 10? Sometimes. Do you drive? Yeah. What about the ocean? Did you build the coconut raft? Not yet. Oh, what about dyeing your hair green? Remember the time we uh, tried no, no, to- No, no, no. My hair's normal. Oh. Sorry to disappoint. Well, you didn't. Uh, where are you? Here. Where is here? <laughs> here? What does here look like? I don't know. Kind of black? Oh, wait, uh, no, it's just dark. There are dust bunnies. What do you do? Pet them. No, I mean with your time. Watch out for you. You're stalking me. Stalking? Following me. Oh, no, nothing like that. And what is it like? I listen. You said you watched me. I do. Uh, sort of. What does that mean? I look out for you. I don't understand. You know, like a hero with a cape and a sword, except less dragons and more waiting. I gotta go. Wait, no. I'll be right back. Promise? Pinky. That doesn't count if you don't do the thing. On my honor, then. Okay. Later, later, Lizzie Lou. Later. Beth sits at the table and stares down the camp. The lights shift, indicating that time has passed into the evening. We're back from the trenches. And I brought donuts. Beth? Hello, sleepyhead. Did you even move since this morning? It was afternoon. Sure. Hungry? Yeah. I brought donuts. Before dinner? Yeah. Why would I expect anything less? Beats me. Glazed? 
I'm not really in the mood for donuts. Beth. Dan. What kind of donut hating heathen are you dating, Meg? The cute kind. <laughs> Gross. It's criminal. I don't hate donuts. I'm just not that hungry. Fine. I mean, if you really don't want it. Hand it over. Dan grins and hands Meg a donut. So, what's up? Nothing. Look at you. You're a mess. I am not. As a tiebreaker, I can confirm you're a mess. Oh, shut up. Just calling it as I see it. Beth reaches for a donut. <laughs> Don't be so smug. What are you calling smug? Are we still going to dinner? Is food all you think about? No. I also think about history, film, chemistry. Ew. Um, don't blame me just because I get more tail than you. <laughs> Ew. Seconded. Sex, sex, sex. You're such a child. You love me. <sighs> Seriously, though, are we going out or what? Actually, I'm not feeling so good. Why don't you guys go without me? Really? Yeah, I don't want to ruin the evening. Consider it ruined. No, Dan, I just... Lay off. I'm... I'm just teasing. Do you want to lay down? I can make you some soup. I, I think we have a can in the closet. I don't think so. Oh, come on. You love soup when you're sick. You're very sweet. But I just don't want to think about soup right now. Okay. What's going on? You'll think I'm crazy? I already think that. Hush. For real, Meg. It's nuts. I mean, like, totally bonkers. Sounds promising. Would you just tell me already, please? Okay. Uh, but don't say I didn't warn you, and please don't freak out. Just do it. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I've been talking to my best friend. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, from when I was a kid. Yes, and? My best friend... Through SpaghettiOs. SpaghettiOs. Well, the can, really. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, think I'm crazy. What is this? Muppets from space? What, texting wasn't fast enough? You had to go through the pasta helpline? I told you it sounded nuts. Saucy, really. <laughs> Dan, shh. Meg, don't mind him. I'm sorry. I don't mean it. Who is this again? Remember I told you about how when I was a kid, I had that, uh, friend that... Uh, marbles? Oh. Marbles? Who names their kid Marbles? I did. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa what? Not like that. Uh, marbles was a, a... A delusion, I guess. That's what they called it. He's a... Uh, I thought he was imaginary. My dad said he was. I haven't seen him in ages. Shit. Dan. No, this is cool. It's uh, like Harvey in real life. You know Harvey, the Jimmy Stewart movie? Oh, come on, the guy from It's a Wonderful Life. Sure, Dan. So you've been talking to your imagination through a can. Spaghetti-o can. You're sure? Yeah. When did it start? This morning. Wow. Um, what did it say? Nothing much. He asked if I dyed my hair green. Hey, that might be fun. What did he want? He forgot. Of course he did. Probably happens when your brain is made of toothpaste. Dan. What? Oh, I'm sorry, Beth. What is your imaginary friend's brain made of? He said he was going to call back. On the can? Yeah. Weird. I know. 
you know, you'd think you'd maybe switch it up. Maybe try the banana. Better reception, really. Don't, don't you have to go? Huh? Homework. Don't you have to go do it? Uh... Dan. Yeah. Yeah, I have to go write a paper. Oh. Okay. Um, night, Dan. Meg and Dan cross toward the door. Dan hugs Meg hard. Call me if you need anything. I will. Dan exits. Meg looks to Beth, concerned. Did you drink enough water today? You're supposed to drink, like, your weight in liquid or something. Well, I mean, not really, because I guess you can also, like, drown your system or whatever, but dehydration can really fuck you up, like, big time. Lethargy, weight gain, make you see things. <laughs> I had coffee? Coffee is not water. It's a liquid. Did you sleep last night? Ex exhaustion can mess with your mind, too. Maybe you're just tired from all the stress in school and, you know, no. I can't believe this is happening. Are you okay? Yes. Beth. I'm fine. I'm just confused. Do you think it's, should we call someone? No. Your psychiatrist. I haven't seen her in two years. There's no shame in asking for help. I don't Beth. need to I ask just, her. If you're having delusions again, I think it would be smart I to told go. you I'm not delusional. It's not a hallucination. I'm not crazy. Of course you're not crazy. I heard him. I know, love. But just because you heard marbles doesn't mean it's real. I know that, Meg, okay? I don't need a lecture. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be defensive. I know. It was over. I really thought I was better. I know. If it's a relapse, it won't kill me to let it happen for a while. That's not funny. I didn't mean for it to be. You don't wait to get help. That's what they always tell you. You don't I'm wait. I'm not suicidal, Meg. But he's here he again. He is you only a thing in my head. Just a voice at that. I'm scared. He is not dangerous. Promise. I promise. But I have to figure this out, and if I call now, I don't think I ever will. Please just let me figure this out for a little while. I promise I'll call her if it gets worse. Okay. Thank you. Beth yawns. Maybe you should go to bed. It's so early. It's late enough. I guess. I'm going to bed. I thought you were hungry. Lost my appetite. I'm sorry. Not your fault, love. Good night, then. Are you coming? I'll be up soon. You need sleep, Beth. I will. Okay. Meg crosses to Beth and wraps her arms around her. It's going to be okay. Yeah, I know. I love you. Double. Meg exits. Beth watches to make sure Meg is gone and then sits down, chin in her hands with the can in front of her. The lights shift to the backyard. 
It is almost empty. David enters from the side beside the house. He is carrying a stack of lumber and a bundle of rolled paper. You with me, soldier? Mark yep. staggers in, hauling a huge toolbox. Yup. What kind of answer is that? Sir, yes, sir. Better. Permission to put down the tools, Captain? Granted. Mark puts down the toolbox and snaps his hand to his forehead in salute. David returns this. At ease, kid. David sets about organizing the wood. Mark gathers some flowers from the edge of the yard and sits down, picking at them and twisting them together. After a while, he grows impatient and goes over to his father. Will you tell me what we're making now? It's a surprise. It's not a surprise if I am making it. <laughs> For Lizzie. Please. I just don't think you're ready. Dad. Can you keep a secret? Yeah. We're building a fruit stand. Dad! Have I ever lied to you? Uh, don't answer that. Just tell me what we're really making. You can't tell Lizzie. Might I remind you, Lizzie's a baby. Yeah. Dad. Well, if you can't keep a secret. Okay, okay, I won't tell. <laughs> David unrolls the paper, revealing the basic plans for a treehouse. Whoa! I know. It's like a castle. For you and Lizzie. We should give it a porch. Uh, all right. And flowers for Lizzie. Eh, good idea. And curtains. Uh, okay. And turrets. Uh, well. And um, a pirate lookout. A slow down there, Bob the Builder. Let's take it one step at a time. Okay. What do we do first? Step one, lunch. The apartment. Beth is where we left her. Lizzie? Uh, niner one niner, ground to Lizzie Phelan, do you read me? I said, do you read me? No! The planes are coming in hard! No! Oh no, I'm gonna crash! Baron, help! No! Beth snaps to attention, having fallen asleep. I'm here! Uh, I'm here! I'm here, what's wrong? The rocket, it's crashing, it's an emergency, call the National Guard! What, where? My rocket, silly. Rocket? Duh. How did you get a rocket? I don't really have a rocket. It's just pretend, remember? I don't really play pretend these days. Boy, you aren't much fun anymore. That's not true. Sure. It's not. Uh-huh. Guess what? You want to know a secret? No. Are you sure? Because it's super secret and important, and only important people are allowed to know. Okay, tell me. What's the password? I don't know. Yes, you do. No. You do. Just try. Okay, fine. Um... Bazooka? Nope. <laughs> Try again. Abracadabra. I'm not a baby, Lizzie. I don't know, Marge. Just tell me. <laughs> it's red and yummy. Twizzler? Getting hotter. Zinger! That's it! Ding, 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 ding! We have a winner! <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, what is it? What's the big secret? Don't you want to know what you want? No, I want to know the secret. It's a kiss. He blows a kiss into the receiver. Thank you. Come on, Mar. You have to swear not to tell a soul. Okay. Well, I guess you can tell some people, but not everyone. Mar. No, Lizzie, it's important. All right, fine. Zinger, promise. Tell me the secret. Marvel's end of the conversation fades as Meg comes into the room, wiping sleep from her eyes. That's not funny. What is going on? 
I don't know what. Mar, you're breaking up. Come to bed, Beth. Shh. What is this? <laughs> no, that's impossible. No, we are not going to play hide and seek now. No. Mar, come back. There's no one there, Beth. He was there the whole time. Who? My brother. The backyard again. A tree house is positioned in the far corner of the yard in a thicket of trees. Mark enters at a run, Lizzie on his back. He lifts her up into the tree house. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Stay here, okay? Be super duper quiet. Okay. Think he promise? Promise. Wait. Lizzie takes off her flower crown and puts it on Mark's head. Now you look beautiful. Handsome. Like a real prince. Mark winks at her, and then he crouches beside the house and waits. After a moment, David enters. He is wearing a suit, but is disheveled. His tie is around his head, pant legs rolled up to his knee, and he is carrying a large stick and is holding his briefcase like a shield. Where are you, you little scoundrel? I am here, sir. How dare you call me little? Bless ye. Where's my treasure? I don't Mark jumps out from his hiding place. I don't have your treasure. I, I think you do. No. Give it back, fiend. You'll never take her alive. Is that so? A soldier's pinky promise is his word. Then I guess I'll have to take it from ye. Mark and David sword fight. Eventually, David disarms Mark. Mark turns to run, and David lifts him up, and he spins. Dad, let me go. I'm too big for this. Tell me where she is. The tower. She's in the tower. David puts down a still giggling Mark and crosses to the playhouse. Fair maiden, it is I, the brave, powerful, and dashingly handsome prince. Daddy, no, you're a pirate. Mark's the prince. A very tiny Lizzie has appeared in the window of the treehouse. My apologies. Fair maiden, it is I, the brave, powerful, and dashing handsome pirate, Dadbeard. I am here to rescue you from the evil Markles and return ye to the kitchen for snacks. Snacks? Only for pirates and princesses, not for pillaging princes. Dad, come on. It's okay, Daddy. He's a good guy. Right, Mark? Mark nods enthusiastically. See? Hmm. You've been reformed, have you? Sir, yes, sir. Very well, then. Liver and onions for the princess and the peasant. Ew. Prince. Fine, then. I see we Farron children are tasteless. Uh, how about apples and peanut butter? And raisins. All right. Come on inside and we can see what we can do. Yes. You coming, Mark? Be right in. All right, kiddo. Hurry up or the Princess Lizzie here will eat all the rations on you. Hey. David lifts up Lizzie and puts her on his shoulders before ducking through the back door and into the house. Mark picks up his, the stick and postures with it, making up some kind of bad swordsmanship skills. He slashes at the air as he climbs up the ladder into the treehouse. He jumps around for a moment before a loud crack is heard and the lights shift. Mark! A huge crash can be heard. The treehouse has fallen. The lights come up on Dan and Meg in the apartment. It is mid-morning. Meg leans on the island. Her head is in her hands, and she clearly hasn't slept well. Dan knocks and enters without waiting for a reply. Morning. Meg mumbles an unintelligible reply. Dan approaches her and puts his chin on her shoulder. Do you want coffee? No, thank you. Coco? Dan. Is it a tea kind of day? I'm thinking maybe tea. Meg gives him a look out of the corner of her eye. Is that a no to tea? Cream, no sugar. Good. He busies himself getting the kettle going. Bagel? What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you want a bagel? No. Pancakes? If we're going to talk about food, can we please talk about SpaghettiOs? At least that might be helpful. 
Okay, fine. SpaghettiOs were released in 1956, Franco-American, later Campbell's Soup. There are four sizes of SpaghettiOs rings. You can have small, medium, large. Oh my God, food. how do you know that? I spent the night on Google. I'll be the king of trivia now. I can go back to talking about breakfast food if that helps. God, p please, no. <laughs> okay, so... What do you want to talk about? Ghosts. Ghosts. Yeah. Have you ever, like, seen one? No. Oh, okay. Wait. Are you asking me to go ghost hunting with you? Because that would be seriously cool. Are you thinking about dabbling in the paranormal? Oh, my little Meg is getting all grown up. No, but seriously, I can get you started if you want. I have some books about it. And they're really actually very fascinating. Maybe you can really think about it. <laughs> God, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just curious. Oh. Why? It's her brother. Marbles is... Yeah, yeah. Mark, I guess. Holy shit. Yeah. That's gotta be... Whoa. Yeah. Mark's dead. Yeah. Wow. Is she okay? I mean, that's, that's huge. I didn't think she was ever going to go to sleep. Is she? Yeah, still sleeping. Good, I'm sure she needs it. I want to be supportive of whatever is going on with her, but it's taking all of my willpower to not call her psychiatrist and beg her to see Beth again. Why? She's talking to a SpaghettiO can. Yeah? The first time you got drunk, you talked into your shoe. I didn't call the pros on you. She's not drunk, Dan. I know. It's not the same. I know. Which is why I need you to tell me about ghosts. Huh? This is real for her. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. Very noble. No, I just mean, tell me about ghosts. Are you asking me to? Yes. Say it. Dan. Fine, I'm not telling you. You're a child. And you're groveling for my assistance. I'm, I don't grovel. I'm waiting. <sighs> Talk nerdy to me. Oh, that's my girl. Please just tell me. Sit back, my student, and learn. Is this going to be like your last lecture on the realistic probability of dinosaurs being aliens? Do you want to know or not? I do. Back in the days of yore, there were people who believed in ghosts. Do you mind? This is a very serious matter involving your girlfriend, if you recall. Meg pulls up a chair. I'm listening. As I was saying, people believe in ghosts. Always have, always will. There's a bunch of theories. The one we all know is that the spirit of a dead person comes to visit. Right. And then there's the unfinished business ghost. The ones who never saw the light or whatever. Exactly. 
but my favorite theory is that ghosts are time travelers. Oh my God. No, I'm serious. There's a whole thing about how ghosts are just alternate dimensions and times bleeding through where the fabric of the universe is thin or where people are repeating scenarios or emotions or... Um... So Mark, Mark could be a, a time-space warp. Sort of. Okay. It's hard to explain. Of course it is. Do you want me to go into string theory on you? Because I will. No. No, that's okay. Yeah, it probably doesn't fit anyways because she can't see him. Wait, can she? No, and neither can I. Okay, so I won't go into string theory. He could be a legit spirit. A la Sixth Sense, very jump out and scare you. Boo. No. Beetlejuice? Maybe he's more Beetlejuice? Do you know they're making a sequel? Oh, please don't say it again. Oh, Haunted Mansion! Marbles is more like Casper so far, more than anything. Christina Ricci. Dan. Ghosts. Please, focus. Right, ghosts. Got it. Um, it could just be her imagination. I said I was going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Not, not like that. Then what, Dan? What? Maybe she's trying to give herself a message. About what? Dan gives Meg a hard look. Clearly she knows what it should be about. Why wouldn't she just talk to me? She can't talk to you about this. I... I asked her to marry me, not to take me off life support. Jesus. You know she can't. Then why not you or some? I think she is. In her way. Look, whether marbles is ghost or quirk or hallucination, she is talking to someone. Why does it have to be him? She's been fighting to avoid Mar Marble since Mark died. It's been years since the last time, Dan. Like, before we were dating years. I think she saw him freshman year when we got smashed at Jamie's party. That's different. Why does it keep happening? The past is addictive. And if he really is a ghost, I don't think Beth has any control over him. Should I get an exorcist? Is there one of those around here? I don't know. What do I do? I don't know. Shit, it's after six. I I I've got to go or I'll be late. Can't you call in? Lanny would kill me. She's got a baby shower this afternoon. Understood. I'll get out of your hair. Okay. Uh, hey, Dan? Yeah? Thanks. For the tea. <laughs> no problem. Dan pats Meg awkwardly on the back and she leans in to hug him. I love you. I love you too, jerk. Noob. <laughs> Dan exits. Beth enters. Groggy. Hey. Oh, hey, you're up. Good morning. Or, I guess, afternoon. Afternoon. Beth begins making coffee. How are you feeling? Mm, shitty. I figured. Do you want me to call Parker and tell him you won't be in today? I already did. You did? Yeah. What did you tell him? I told him the truth. Wait, really? No, Meg, I haven't totally lost it yet. I told him I wasn't feeling well, which isn't exactly untrue. 
Thank God. So I'm going to go see my I dad this thinking, afternoon. Are you sure? Yep. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. Are you sure? Marbles wants me to talk to him. So you're taking orders from SpaghettiOs now? Jesus, Meg. Are you kidding me? You haven't talked to your dad in three years. Three years! After everything you've worked so hard to heal, how many times have you told me that a lousy soup can can convince you to throw all of it to the wind? I'm scared too, Meg. But I think I have to. Going back is important to Marvels. It's important. Are you going to tell him? What? About us? He knows about us. That I propose to you. I'm not sure. That I asked you to love me forever? Are you going to tell him that you're considering being a raging homosexual forever? Yes. What? Yes. Yes? To you, I will marry you. <laughs> what? Yes, Meg. Maybe now isn't the best time. I was going to tell you before everything, but it's not a fever answer. This is real. I'm not crazy. I love you in a mostly not crazy way. Okay? Yes. 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 Nothing he can say or not say will change how much I love you. I love you double. Do you want me to tell him? I want you to be comfortable. Well, as comfortable as you can be. I'd rather you be more comfortable than not. And I want you to be safe. Beth hugs Meg hard. You better head out. Yeah. I'll see you tonight, okay? Yes. Beth kisses Meg gently. I'm going to be okay. And after I'm okay, we're going to get good and married. <laughs> okay. And we're going to get a gerbil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love you, Elizabeth Farron. I love you double. The backyard. It is raining. The treehouse is in the corner, freshly collapsed and boarded up. The house is full of people dressed in black. Lizzie backs out of the house and into the yard. She tilts her head towards the sky, her eyes closed. I love rain. Lizzie opens her eyes. Marbles is sitting on the table, legs swinging freely. Who are you? I'm Marbles. That's a funny name. Not as funny as the Dalai Lama. That's true. I know. Are you here because of Mark? Yeah. He's my brother. Yeah. I wish he'd come back. Me too. I miss him. Are you sad? Yeah. Do you want a cookie? No. Do you want to play? Not really. Do you want to hear a joke? Okay. Okay. Knock, knock. I said knock, knock. Who's there? Iva. Iva who? I have a sore hand from knocking. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very funny. You laughed. Yeah. There's the sound of David speaking loudly from inside the house and something breaking. I gotta go back. Okay. Will I see you later? You can bet on it. Prove it. I will.
Lizzie goes inside and Marbles follows her to the door. He waves, she waves, and then she exits. Marbles sadly leans against the house as the lights go out. End of Act One. <laughs>